Have you ever been hyper focused on finding a vehicle where you're spending countless hours scouring the internet, searching Facebook Marketplace all over the country to find that exact car or truck that you're looking for? Well, that was this vehicle for me. It took me about two years to find this truck. It's a 2005 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD Duramax, four wheel drive, leather interior. It's an LT. It's got 85,000 miles on it and I am the second owner. This is an absolute cream puff of a truck and my wife is making me sell it. So we're gonna spend the next couple of videos getting this thing ready to sell while we get some more things dialed in on Cookie Monster but we're gonna start with detailing the undercarriage of this truck, and I think I have a plan of action to make it, one, super easy, and two, to preserve the original paint underneath the truck so we don't have to go in there and put on an undercoating. So let's slide under this Silverado and see what we're working with. The undercarriage of this truck is already very clean. I mean, we got a little bit of uh, mud built up. I had to go off-road to park my trailer, but this is mainly what I'm concerned with. There's just a little bit of surface rust on the frame rails from obviously just sitting outside for the last 20 years. And Sweet Patina has come out with their patina sauce in an aerosol can, and I think that's gonna be perfect to preserve the finish on this frame, but not have to apply an undercoating. While I'm waiting for the chassis to dry, I'm gonna take off these side moldings. These things have irritated me ever since I bought it and I've never taken them off. I don't know why, but this one just has not aged well, but it should just peel right off. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Double side sticky tape. No surprise there. Oh yeah, look at all that junk in there. So this is kind of what I was worried about. Um, there was a paint chip that came off here. It could have been done at the factory or whatever. But I'm gonna have to uh, do a little touch up here. And when you're taking this stuff off, you just wanna be real careful. You, know, you don't wanna put the pressure washer right on the paint because this could be, uh, this paint could be really soft if it's holding a lot of moisture. I'm gonna get the eraser wheel and just kind of blast off this gook, gook, gunk, gunk. Yeah. We do have a line right here. It's hard to tell if it's a It's a paint scratch. Feels like it's on top of the paint. Could just be some more of this adhesive that's just not wanting to come off. This is gonna take me a minute. I'll check back in with you guys in a few. Now I just gotta knock this side out and then we can move back to under the chassis. Now here is that patina sauce in the aerosol can. I think this is gonna be perfect for this truck. Now this is gonna polymerize to a hardened finish. It's gonna be water repellent and water resistant and it's gonna help protect against any future rust forming on the frame. Time to start putting on this sauce here. You see, that's what I'm looking for. We're, we're still gonna have, you know, this surface rust right here. But to me, this is just gonna look a lot better. Now it's not gonna be as shiny once it all dries up. But we're gonna have that layer of protection on there. And it's gonna look a lot better.
All right, just gonna do the rest of the frame and then we'll see what this looks like in the morning. Well, that is looking pretty dang good. Check it out. Now, what I like about this finish is that it's gonna polymerize to a, a hardened finish. So you're not gonna have like dirt and sand and stuff stick to the frame. Um, even though it has a nice kind of glossy, not really glossy, like a semi-gloss sheen to it, there's not gonna be a bunch of stuff that's gonna stick to it, which is, I think, gonna be very, very nice. This is, however, taking a little bit longer to dry than the normal sweet patina. Uh, it could be because of the delivery mechanism, because it's coming out of an aerosol can versus coming out of a can with a rag. But uh, it's still a little tacky. But again, we'll let it dry. Moving on to washing the truck to get it ready for a quick polish. Oh yeah, let me show you this too. Not sure if we're gonna be able to see this on camera, but here's where that um, door bolting was. It's just, it has yellowed the paint right here, all the way down on both sides. It's just yellowed the paint. Uh, and also this one's got some paint chips and dents. So same thing on the other side. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to put some molding back on. Not what I wanted to do, but I think that's gonna be the right call because, you know, again, the, the paint I think came off because it, when these things are on for 20 years, they'll make that paint soft under there and, and lift, they can lift the paint. And, and I think that's what happened here, unfortunately. There's only so much you can do, but I'll let the next owner or the purchaser I'll let them know about that. And uh, shoot, they'll probably even watch this video of me getting this truck ready to sell. Anyway, let's watch this truck. So the truck looks great from way back here and uh you know again the sides aren't too bad when you get up to the hood i mean look at all of this junk that's in the paint look at all that junk same thing with the roof i mean you just got all this build up along the sides here. And then there's just a bunch of junk in there. So now I gotta come up with a game plan to get all this trash out of the paint. And I think what I'm gonna do is use uh, a kind of like an abrasive uh, sponge, kind of like this. And then once I get the majority of it off, we're gonna hit it with a clay bar and see if that brings out all of that trash. Now I typically, typically don't like using these abrasive sponges, but we're doing a whole polish on this truck anyway, and there's just so many contaminants in the paint right here. I don't, I don't think I really have a choice. So that has gotten off the majority of the trash. A lot of that heavy pollen buildup and dirt take our clay bar, just use the soapy water as a, a lubricant here. Oh yeah. It's pulling all that stuff right out of the paint. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you betcha. Man, you could even easily see the difference here. See all that trash? And then boom. What trash? That's clean, brother. Well, I think that's gonna be the winning combo. I'm actually using an older clay bar for this. And then I'll go back over the whole truck with a new clay bar. Just wanna get rid of all this big stuff before 
we start dialing it in. Dialing it in. <clears throat> I did buy a detailer's light. Some of the past videos I did, I was trying to show you guys the swirls and getting rid of the swirls, but was unsuccessful. But I can't put the truck in the garage because of Cookie Monster. So I don't know how well it's gonna work outside. Might have to wait till nighttime. Oh yeah, dude. I wish you guys could see it now, right here with me. It just doesn't translate on camera. The slickeriness. Got the roof all done. Did that first pass with the clay bar. So now we're, we're working in the little detailed areas. Can you see right in here? There's just a bunch of little, just a bunch of dirt gathered, a bunch of, there's some like moss build up, all that stuff. So right now I'm just, I'm getting that out with uh, some sweet patina, all purpose cleaner, spraying it down. And then grabbing my, uh, just a little bristle brush, getting in there, scrubbing it, and then hitting it with the pressure washer. Um, but I'm gonna do that on the outside of all, like the door handles, the windows, just where all that buildup is. And I'm not doing the jams or really peeling back any of the uh, weather stripping yet because when I polish this truck, there's gonna be a lot of compound that gets in the nooks and crannies. So I'm gonna save on that until after the polish. Then I'll be able to get in the rest of the door jams and all those little nooks and crannies and get the rest of that junk out after it's polished and get the compound out at the same time. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Then we're gonna do the final clay bar. There is a squirrel that is dying over there. You hear that? I'm gonna spray the paint down with this iron remover uh, to get any other contaminants out of the paint before I do that final clay bar. If there are any iron particles or anything embedded, it's gonna start changing colors. Yeah, we got some color changes over here. It's turning purple. It's gotta sit on there for a couple minutes and dwell. And you rinse it off. Paint's feeling real good. Don't worry guys, I'm gonna polish it. I can do that. Water is not beating off like at all. This is all just soaked. There's just a layer of water in here. It looks like a clear coat. I think I said that before. Anywho's, what I'm gonna do is, I don't have any uh, clay bar lube. So I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to use a uh, soapy water. Process is literally exactly the same. Spray it down with your clay bar lube, clay bar it, fold over your clay bar, go to the next section, and keep on working. So this is kind of my go-to, this is 3D speed, it's, it's a one step polish and protect. So one step and you're done. That should polish the paint, get rid of your swirl marks and put a uh, layer of wax on there. So my first step is this with a white pad or what once was a white pad. It's now uh, the color of that stuff. And see what kind of results we get. We'll put on some products, spread it around and on a low speed, spread it around. Then we're just gonna go full bore and run it.
dramatic improvement. Not perfect, but a lot of y'all may know GM's paint's pretty thin, so I don't wanna just go ham on this with a multi-step paint correction. I just wanna get most of the swirl marks out. I mean, I wanna get most of the swirl marks out just so we get that nice shine back. Is there polished paint? Unpolished paint. See those swirls? Trying to get you all different angles here. I can definitely see those swirls right there. Gonna keep on moving here. Again, taped off all my weather stripping and plastics and rubber. Really don't want to hit the polishing compound on that because it will stain and it's a pain in the butt to get off. So again, kind of like pre-spread it. Low speed, spread it out. And send it. I mean, it is absolutely an improvement. 100% an improvement. I just don't know if I want to take it a step further or just run with it. Starting to run out of daylight here. Hoping it doesn't start raining. But uh, did a little behind the scenes action. Wasn't 100% happy with just the white foam cutting pad. Looks good, but not great. So what I did was I took my orange foam cutting pad right here. Use the same one step compound. Hit it on the fender, then followed up with the white foam polishing pad. And I think that's gonna be our winner. So this fender is done. You're still gonna have light swirls, but it's not gonna be as heavy as this over here. And most definitely not as heavy as this over here. So that's the plan, running out of daylight though. And uh, again, looking like it's gonna rain. So I don't have enough time to do that first pass with the orange pad tonight before we lose daylight. So I'm gonna pick this up in the morning. Before the day ends though, I gotta get the rest of this imprint off where the molding was. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. This is 3D's part of their two-step cut uh, system here. So this is step one. So this is gonna be their heavy cut compound. So I've just been putting some of this on a microfiber and we did have uh, that ghosting is still a little bit right here as you might be able to see, but it took all that out. I did the same thing on the other side. Then once I'm done with this, I'll call it a night and jump on the paint correction tomorrow. Thankfully, we got some overcast today. Got my marching orders dialed in here. The old uh, front fender's done with the orange pad, followed up with the white pad with the one-step 3D speed. So now it's just time to freaking get to work and polish this whole thing twice.
just wrapped up the first step and this truck is looking real dang good man gonna refine it a little bit going with that white pad on the da with the same polish we'll be able to move on to the next step but i'm not gonna bore you with that it's pretty much the exact same process that i just did just gonna start at the front work my way around the truck then I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. We're going to work on the next thing to get this truck dialed in. Polishing is done. And my goodness, look at this truck, dude. That is a beauty right there. Let's see if we can get you in on the hood here. Just look at how pretty that is. Well, now the heavy lifting is done with polishing the paint. Time to move on to the detailed stuff. I'm gonna hit this chrome with some polish. Just do it by hand. There's not a whole lot of chrome on this truck. I mean, just like that, that's already looking significantly better. Next up, we're gonna be hitting this glass with a water spot remover. Whoop. Oh, is that broken? This stuff smells like uh, some fishing tackle. Not a very pleasant smell. Still got some buildup on the edges here and in the middle. didn't hardly touch it. All right. I'm gonna try, hit this with a clay bar. See what kind of results we get with that. Oh, well that smells a lot nicer. Well, it's still on there. Gonna give something else a shot here. Yep, yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Looks really good, like right here. And then right here, we still got a lot of hard water spots and then up top too. What do you say we uh, grab an orange pad and give that another shot? That seems to be the ticket. We still got some up here. I wanna just roll it down, roll the window down a little bit. And... Can't really push too hard on that. <laughs> Afraid I'm gonna break it. All right, let's do the rest of them. See all those water spots on there? They, I mean, it goes away really quick but you could see all those spots left behind. That's what we're getting rid of. All right, let's see. Yeah, buddy, look at that. I like it. The shine on this truck is crazy. I can't wait till the sun comes out so I can see this thing in the daylight. Went ahead and hit the jams. Um, took off the weather stripping here. Got a bunch of parts for Cookie Monster back here. Took off the weather stripping, cleaned this up with some uh, detail spray. There was like some dirt and stuff built up back here. Went ahead and cleaned that out. So that's all nice and clean. So jams are done, plastic's done, chrome is done. Next up, let's do them wheels. Ooh. Yeah, buddy, look how dirty that is. Mm -hmm. 
We gotta clean all that up. Watch out, don't step on that. All right, we're gonna let that sit for a little while. All right, go ahead and spray this down too. Oh, dang. That's wild. I did not expect that to work so well. Man, what a difference. this just took one of the rears off sprayed it down with that Wheel and tire cleaner. <laughs> it's just awesome to see, man. What's up, bud? I was driving my car on the road. Well, the wheels are looking nice and clean, but up front, these covers are just, they're pretty dirty. So have to come in here and uh, do a little hand polishing. Let me show you what, I, what I've been doing. And we'll start with this one. So taking my just Blue Magic Metal Polish, the stuff I've been using on the chrome and everything, I'm getting tired. Yeah. Throw a little dab on there. Got me my uh, flathead screwdriver. And I can work my way into these corners here. Only eight more to go. <laughs> oh boy. Now we got all these little areas done where the lug nuts are. I can focus on this area right here. Where'd that truck come from? They're playing with electric. They're playing with RC trucks. <laughs> and the new one just showed up. Apparently mom's driving it. Bad gum that looks good. Dude, this truck is looking better than it ever has before. I have never detailed it. I've owned it for two and a half years and I've always wanted to polish it up and make it perfect and now, I mean, dude, this thing is nice. It makes it even more painful that I gotta sell this truck. So speaking of that, Lauren, she wants me to sell it. She's not making me sell it. 
but she has the opportunity to purchase a business that she's been working with for the last six months. And I feel like instead of me just having these trucks sitting around, it's better suited to sell the truck, use the money to buy this business for her so she can continue to grow personally and professionally. And I think that's the best move for us right now. And I know it's gonna be impossible to replace this truck and I'm never gonna have the opportunity to buy a one owner freaking under a 100,000 mile Cat Eye Duramax. But you know what, life is what it is and I enjoyed my time with it. I don't drive it nearly as much as I should because I just, this is more like a trophy for me rather than a vehicle. So I will have another Cat Eye, not right now, but that's what we're doing on the back end. So be sure to tune in next week. Let me show you what we're gonna be doing to this truck. Now the outside is perfect, the inside is not. We gotta do some cleaning up in here. Gotta take out the headliner. Did a terrible job about a year and a half ago replacing the headliner. The glue let go. So I gotta take this all back apart and put this interior back together and get the inside looking just as good as the outside. So that's gonna do it for me on this one. If you enjoyed watching me struggle in this video, why don't you watch this one right here? Or why don't you watch some show coverage that I do right over here? Or if you wanna hit that button in the middle and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.